Hey, physics class. Let's go through question number or video number two, uh, talking about friction and how it's going to interact with us during our forces unit here. So we have our I have our formula put up here, uh, and there's a picture of it in the documents that I'm sending out under helpful videos number one. Um, but that is basically it says F and then FR equals this weird little U thing which has the name of mu, and then multiplied by FN. So what this all means? This is force of friction. So this is. Force of friction. So how much force is friction actually giving? This is what's called mu. Why? I don't know. I didn't give it that name. And force normal. So the only one that we've kind of talked about so far is force normal. Remember, if um, a box is sitting on a table, there's two forces. There's a force of gravity pushing down on it because there's a box. It's pushing down on the table. And then force normal is the table pushing back on it. So that's just basically the force that is holding this box up. So it's the table that's holding up. It's the ground that's holding me up right now. Basically, anytime you put something down on something and it doesn't fall through it, there's a force normal. So that's the only force that we've talked about. We talked about that last week. This weird mu thing, this is actually our coefficient of friction. Okay, so as much as we call it mu in the physics world, this is the coefficient of friction. This is what I was talking about in the other video, coefficient of friction. And it's always shown in a like decimal. So like let's say 0 0.25. Okay? So it's always going to be shown in a decimal. Um, if the lower you go, the less coefficient of friction. So what we uh, my example last video was like an ice block on a very smooth site, ice surface. That's really, really close to 0, 0.0. It might be like 0 0.02, 0 0.03, where my shoes on the ground, rubber on kind of the floor, is a really high coefficient of friction, maybe 0 0.8, 0 0.85, something like that. Um, we can't ever get back, can't ever get to one, because if you had a coefficient of friction of one, you'd never be able to like move. You'd be stuck there. Um, so that's, that's why we can't ever have anything over one. And these, when I talked in the other video, I talked about like a percentage. This decimal obviously can turn into a percentage. Basically, you're taking away 25% of whatever that is. Um, but that little weird kind of U looking thing is the coefficient of friction. And that's the symbol that you're going to see from now on in physics for that coefficient of friction. And obviously, over here, we have like, what is that actual force of friction? So to figure out how much force of friction is on an object, we take that coefficient and we multiply it by the actual normal force. So basically, the more mass that you have, the more mass you have, again, more mass means that you're eventually going to have more gravity pulling on it, which means you're going to get more force. So how do we figure out normal force? Usually, 99% of the time, it is just our mass multiplied by gravity, that 9.8. Okay, so mass multiplied by gravity. That's how we get our normal force almost all the time. The only time it's going to change is when we start doing some angle stuff. There's going to be a very simple little angle question at the end of this, like probably video number four. Um, but for anything that's just pulling sideways or for anything that's just kind of on a regular table, your normal force is going to be just mass times gravity. Okay? So how do we find that friction force? If I have, again, this, uh, let's say this is, let's say we have a sled, and I am pulling this sled straight sideways, okay? How much force is friction gonna be stopping me by? The way that you do that is you find the coefficient of friction, and you multiply by the force normal, okay? So that's how this formula actually works. My next video is gonna have two or three examples, but that's how that formula actually works. The one thing that I wanna put here, and it's a kind of an interesting graphic that I like to put, um, is I want to remind you of how to find acceleration. Now we did this last week. It's a very simple formula. Okay, force equals mass times acceleration. So we're talking about acceleration there. There's a bad glare right there. One second, I'm gonna move that. All right, let's try and do this. Put it in. Here. Force equals mass times acceleration. Okay, so find acceleration. We just go force times mass. Okay. And we'll be using net force a lot this week. If I'm pulling with a force and friction is slowing me down with a force, 
This is gonna be a lot of net force. We'll talk about that in the next video. Um, but what I wanna talk about is this. Let's say there's an object. Let's say I'm applying a force, force applied. I'll get out of the way. It's a force applied, but there's also a force of friction, okay? Let's say those two things are even. Let's say the force of friction is exactly the same as the force applied. A lot of people, a lot of students think that automatically because the force of friction is the same as the force applied, this object cannot move at all. That's not necessarily true. If the object is already moving, so let's say I'm pushing this, let's say this thing is already moving, and now I just kind of slow it down a little, or I, I'm, I'm pushing with the same amount of force as friction is applying. Again, that's always talk about acceleration. So if these two cancel out, sure, I'm gonna have no acceleration because my net force will be zero. And if I have a net force of zero, then I'm gonna have no acceleration. That doesn't mean it can't move. If it's already moving, if there's already a velocity, then you're still gonna be in motion. You're still gonna be like actually moving, but you may not be accelerating. The best example I can give for this is if you're in your car. Okay, so let's say you're driving on the perimeter. You're going 100 kilometers an hour, okay? You're going the speed limit. If you let off the gas, if you have no applied force, there's just friction and you're gonna start slowing down. You're gonna start going less than 100 kilometers an hour. And that's because force of friction is winning. If you don't apply the force, if you don't touch the gas at all, and you're 100 kilometers an hour, but you just let off the gas, you're gonna start slowing down. That's because friction is going to have, again, it's, it's gonna be the force that's winning right now. All right, let's say you're going 100 kilometers an hour and you are just kind of barely touching the gas. You're, you're touching it, so you have an applied force, but it's basically, but your speedometer says that you're still at 100 kilometers an hour. So your foot's on the gas, but your speedometer's not changing. You're still at 100 kilometers an hour. How is that happening? Well, it's because the force that the car is applying is the same as friction, okay? So yes, you're applying a force. Yes, your car is having to do work. It's having to spend energy, and it's, it's giving a force to the wheels. It's making the, 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 it's making the actual like, tires spin properly. It's, it's, you're giving gas, you're giving a force, but your speedometer still says 100. And the reason is for that is because these two cancel out. So no, you don't have any acceleration. Your car is not speeding up. But yes, you still do have a velocity, and that's because these two are the same, okay? That's why you stay at 100. If you want to speed up, if you want to go from 100 to 110 to pass somebody, your force applied has to be greater, okay? Once your force applied is greater than friction, then you're going to have a positive net force, which means then you're going to start accelerating, okay? So this concept's really, really kind of big in talking about, like, Force friction is always there. How do you slow down? How do you stay the same speed? How do you speed up? If your force friction is winning, you're always going to be slowing down. If these two are equal, if there's a constant speed, and I'm going to use that word quite a bit, if there's a constant speed, these two things have to be equal. And then if you ever want to speed up, force applied has to be greater. So I hope that makes sense. Just starting the formula and then kind of understanding how do we kind of get faster, slower, so stay the same. All right, thanks class. There'll be two more videos.